Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. As everyone knows, it actually takes effort, time, and money to be a jerk. And well, do I have the solution for you if you want to be a jerk on the cheap? Because even jerks need to save money. On today's episode, I've got a $10 commander deck for you, which is all but guaranteed to, well, make your, your friends and everyone else that you ever play this against call you a jerk. So if for whatever reason you want to be classified as a jerk and known as one from friends and other people, well, let's jump into it. So the commander for this very obnoxious deck is of course Cody Vociferous Codex, which is actually kind of ironic because Vociferous, I mean some other synonyms for it, are like uh, blatant, clamorous, boisterous, uh, being so loud or insistent as to compel attention. So, yeah, that could definitely be an action or a descriptor for a jerk. Regardless, Cody is a 1-4 construct. It is a walking, talking book that costs three, and it says you can't cast permanent spells. Now, obviously, that is a massive downside, and we have very few permanent spells in this deck, and I'll talk about why we have them in there in a bit. Regardless, there is a big upside to this commander. Because Cody has pay 4, tap, add Wooberg. When you cast your next spell this turn, exile cards in the top of your library until you exile an instant or sorcery card with lesser mana value. Until end of turn, you may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Put each other card exiled this way on the bottom of your library in a random order. So, Cody essentially ramps you and helps you fix your mana, but more importantly, it has that trigger for whenever you cast your next spell, you get to start exiling cards off the top, Basically, kind of like a cascade, but just for instance and sorceries. So, when you cast something, you reveal until you hit something lesser, and you can cast that for free until the end of the turn. Now, Cody is a fantastic off-the-wall commander because, well, it gives you access to all five colors, which is lovely, and secondly, you can really build the deck around a specific card, since Cody, if you build the deck right, can basically guarantee that you're going to be able to cast a certain card. And actually, you might have seen another one of my Cody decks on a Close Quarters gameplay episode, so make sure you check that episode out at some point. I believe that was Close Quarters episode number six, Getting Swallow and Mitch Has Worms. And I promise that title makes sense if you actually watch the episode. Anyways, where that Cody deck is built around Inevitable Betrayal, this Cody deck is built around, well, let's say, a much different card. Because this deck is built around a card that is definitely one of the jerkiest cards of all time. In fact, the original version of this card is so brutal, it was banned in Commander, it's also banned in Legacy, and even restricted in Vintage. But the callback version of it is not banned, and it's actually even better in this deck. So what is this card that our opponents are going to absolutely despise us for playing? Well, it of course is the Golden Pig of this deck, which is the number one card of our 99, because, you know, the entire deck is built around this card. And the Golden Pig for this deck is Restore Balance. Restore Balance is a sorcery that has absolutely no mana cost. Because typically you'd have to suspend this, it's got suspend 6 for a white. So basically again, you know, you eggs out with time counters on it, then you wait till those 6 time counters are gone from it, then you can actually cast it. However, with Cody, we can actually cast this from Cody's activation, and we'll talk about that here in a second. Regardless, this card is so brutal because it says each player chooses a number of lands they control equal to the number of lands controlled by the player who controls the fewest, then sacrifices the rest. Players sacrifice creatures and discard cards the same way. This is an incredibly brutal effect because, well, it takes everyone down to the lowest player's level. First up, our opponents might have worked very hard, you know, those green players out there, to ramp and get extra lands into play and get ahead of everyone in that way. We, on the other hand, are going to work to keep our number of lands as low as we possibly can, and we'll talk about some lands and other ways to actually make sure that we've got a very low count in this deck. 
So we can take everyone down to the same amount of lands that we have, and our lands might be more valuable than theirs. Regardless, players then do the exact same thing for creatures, and the exact same thing for hands. And the only creature in this deck is Cody, and actually we can make it so that we have absolutely no creatures in play, so players have to sacrifice every creature. But yeah, at the very least, they're going to have to go down to one, if not zero. And of course, we also make it so that everyone has to go down to the least amount of cards in everyone's hands. So we essentially strip all players of resources, setting everyone back a ton. And um, uh, we, we've got ways to do this multiple times to stall the game a lot. And speaking of stalling up the game, that's actually the main objective of this deck. This deck is intended to be a complete deck for complete jerks. So because of that, the deck's intention is not actually to win. The intention of this deck is just to upset the other players and make the game take an absurdly long time. Because what's more of a jerk move than actually never wanting to win and just wanting things to last forever? In a perpetual state, of misery. Regardless, back to how this actually functions in the deck though, essentially all we need to do is activate Cody, again make Wooberg, and cast any spell in this deck that costs one mana, and we're gonna get to this. Because obviously this is the only spell in the entire deck that has a mana cost of zero, so we're gonna hit this every single time we do that. And like I said, the goal of this deck is to actually just cast this as many times as we can to just stall the game out when players just start getting things built back up. We just do it again. So let's start off by talking about some fantastic ways to get this card back into our library so we can start the fun over all again for our opponents. First up, let's talk about an incredible card in this deck with Turn the Earth. This card does a lot of things for this deck. First up, it just costs one mana, which, yep, is a fantastic thing for this deck because, again, we love our one mana spells that help us get to our restore balance. Anyways, it's an instant that says choose up to three target cards in graveyards. The owners of those cards shuffle them into the libraries. You gain two life, and we can flash it back for one and a green. So first up, we can choose to target whatever we want to, whether that's our things in our graveyard or our opponent's things. It can really help us out in a lot of circumstances. Obviously, the most important thing, though, is it can shuffle back restore balance very easily. And on top of that, again, we can flash it back to do it again, or, you know, just to get Cody's trigger again. Next up, we've got some other one mana shuffle effects from things like Serene Remembrance, Stream of Thought, and Dwell in the Past. Serene Remembrance says shuffle it and up to three target cards from a single graveyard into their owner's libraries. So this one not only shuffles restore balance, but it can also shuffle itself. And then Stream of Thought says target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. You shuffle up to four cards from your graveyard in your library. So obviously we can mill someone if we really want to, but more importantly, we can shuffle things into our library. So of course, an even simpler version of this is Dwell in the Past, which says target player shuffles up to four target cards from their graveyard into their library. Regardless, at the end of the day, each of these are fantastic being one mana spells that can help us get back restore balance. But of course, we've got some higher mana cost spells as well that can help us out too with Blessed Respite, Stream of Consciousness, and Witness the Future. Blessed Respite says target player shovels their graveyard into their library, prevent all combat damage we dealt this turn. You know what's more aggravated than losing essentially all of your lands and all of your creatures and, you know, your hand? Uh, losing all of that, and then you finally build stuff back up, you try to attack them, and um, then that player casts a fog while also getting their restore balance back in their library. Next up, though, there's Stream of Consciousness, which says target player shelves up to four target cards from their graveyard into their library. In Witness, the future says target player shelves up to four target cards from their graveyard into their library. You look at the top four cards of your library, then put one of those cards in your hand, and the rest of them on your library in a random order. So this one not only is a way to shuffle restore balance back, but it's also a way to get some card advantage. But speaking of getting cards into our hand... Getting lands into our hand can actually help us out in a lot of scenarios, and we'll talk about some of those here in a bit, but we can really utilize cards like Lay of the Land, Attune with Aether, and Caravan Vigil, especially early, to make sure that we hit our land drops that we need to hit. And, of course, fix our mana in this five-color deck. Lay of the Land is essentially the model for each of these cards, and each of these essentially do the exact same thing. They let us search our library for a basic land, reveal it, put it in our hand, then shuffle our library. Attune with Aether is also going to get us two energy, which... You know, it's nice, really not going to use that, but nice. And then Caravan Vigil can actually help us get that land into play if a creature died this turn, but we're not really planning on that happening. Regardless, again, keep in mind that these simple spells just cost one mana, which again is huge to help us get restored balance. So we're also going to be running some other one mana spells that can get us some lands with Open the Gates, Reclaim the Waste, and Flower Flourish. Open the Gates is going to get us a basic land or a gate, but we're actually not running any gates in this deck, so a basic. And then Reclaim can actually get us one or two if we kicked it. And then Flower is a split card, but we're pretty much all going to use Flower anyways, and it's going to get us a 
plains or a forest. And then finally, for two mana, we can also get a basic with environmental sciences and sylvan reclamation. Environmental Sciences says search your library basic land card reveal, put in your hand, then shuffle, you gain two life. And then Silver Reclamation, if we cast it, is going to exile up to two target artifacts and or enchantments, which can be very nice, or we can basic land cycle it for two. So this card is flexible and can help us out in a lot of scenarios. Regardless, when it comes to our lands, we've also got ways to get more value out of them. For example, again, like I mentioned before, we've got very few permanent spells in this deck, again, because of Cody's restriction, but before we get Cody into play, we can utilize some like Verdant Haven, Glittering Frost, and Find the Path. Or maybe I should say before we get Cody in play, or before we get Cody back out in play, and we'll talk about that here in a bit. Regardless, Verdant Haven is going to enchant a land. When it enters the battlefield, we gain two life, and whenever that enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds one mana of any color to their mana pool. Essentially, our land that we put this on taps for an extra mana. And then Glittering Frost essentially does the exact same thing, but it makes that enchanted land snow and we don't gain the life. Regardless, again, making our lands each more impactful can be huge. If we take everyone down to, say, four lands, but our lands each tap for more than one mana, well, we are ahead of our opponents. We might have the same amount, but our lands are more valuable, and we'll talk about more lands that can help us out with this too. Regardless, another card that can help out is Find the Path. When it enters the battlefield, we venture into the dungeon, and it says Enchanted Land has tap add green green. Venturing to the dungeon is just some nice extra additional value, and yeah, again, allowing our land to tap for two mana can be great. And of course, keep in mind that Cody can really help us out with our mana fixing as well, so that green green can just be utilized to power Cody. Regardless, of course, we've got some other somewhat similar lands with Gifted Paradise, New Horizons, and Sheltered Airy. Each of these has Enchanted Land has tap add two mana of any one color. So this ramps us and helps us fix our mana as well, and again, on top of that, Gifted Paradise is going to gain us three life when it comes into play, and New Horizons is going to have us put a counter on target creature we control which really doesn't matter all that much. Again, Cody being a 2-5 is really not that different from being a 1-4. And finally, there's Market Festival, which does a little more. It says when Enchanted Land is tapped for mana, its controller adds two mana in any combination of colors to their mana pool. So again, this can make one of our lands even more valuable and give us a leg up on our opponents. And speaking of value, we've also got some cards that can help us make some treasures to help keep our land count low, so we can just utilize that treasure mana instead of actually having to get more lands into play, so we'll use cards like You Find a Cursed Idol, Crack Open, and Depths of Desire. You Find a Cursed Idol says choose one, destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, or create a treasure token and venture into the dungeon. And then Crack Open is somewhat similar, it says destroy target artifact or enchantment, create a treasure token. Regardless, obviously destroying an artifact or enchantment can be very impactful, and of course getting that treasure token, well, again, can help us keep our land count low. And also, keep in mind, a somewhat sneaky play if we really need to wipe the board of all creatures is that we actually could destroy Cody, because Cody is an artifact, and then, yeah, by, by doing that, our opponents, once we cast Restore Balance, would you have to sacrifice all their creatures as well, since we have zero creatures. But of course, a nicer way, at least for us, to do that is with Depths of Desire, which says, return target creature to its owner's hand, create a treasure token. So again, with these, we'd essentially activate Cody, cast our one mana spell, go get Restore Balance, and then not cast that just yet, because we can cast until the end of the turn for free. We cast, you know, Depths of Desire, we bounce Cody back to our hand, we get our treasure token, and we say goodbye to everything. Well, okay, again, when I say everything, I mean every creature, and a ton of our opponent's lands, and, well, a lot of hands as well. But of course, this is not our only bounce spell, we've got other fantastic bounce spells like Unsummon, String of Disappearances, and Silent Departure. Un Summon is simply going to bounce target creature back to its owner's hand. String of Disappearances does the exact same thing, but then that creature's controller can pay blue blue and copy the spell and choose new targets for the copy. And then Sound Departure is going to bounce a creature, but it also has flashback for four and a blue. And of course, keep in mind that each of these just costs one mana, so of course they can be fantastic ways to help us go get restored balance. You know, on top of being able to actually bounce Cody for us to take our creature count down to zero. But of course, also keep in mind that they can be more flexible than that since we can bounce any creature, so if we really desperately need to bounce an opponent's creature, we can. A card that cannot do that but can still help us out in a lot of situations, though, is Saving Grasp. It says return target creature you own to your hand, and you can flash it back for a white. So this is a card that we can flash back very cheaply, and we can use it to save Cody. Speaking of which, there's Rescue, which says return target permanent you control to its owner's hand. This one can be an especially spicy card in this deck, again, because remember that this can actually help us reduce our land count. Next up, though, there's Alchemist Retrieval, which has Cleave for one and a blue, and it says return target non-land permanent you control to its owner's hand, and again, with that Cleave cost, if we cast it that way, we can take out that you control part. Regardless, for one mana, we can bounce Cody, and for two mana, we can bounce whatever we want. Finally, we even have a bounce spell that can give us some extra value with Select for Inspection. 
It's an instant for a blue that says return target tap creature to its owner's hand, scry one. Again, obviously, Cody is going to be tapped when we activate it, so yeah, we can just bounce it back to our hand with this and get some extra value at that scry one. And again, keep in mind that although scrying isn't card advantage, it is card selection, and if we happen to see, you know, restore balance on top of our library, we're just gonna wanna put that in the bottom. But on top of balance spells, we also have other ways to protect Cody if we really need to with something like you see a guard approach. It says choose one tap target creature or target creature you control gains hexproof until end of turn. So this is a flexible card that can help us out in multiple situations. Obviously, we can tap something down if we don't want to, you know, be attacked by it. Or, you know, we can just give our commander hexproof to save it from target removal. And speaking of hexproof, we also have Ranger's Guile, Tamiyo Safekeeping, and Blacksmith Skill. Ranger's Guile is going to give target creature plus plus one and hexproof until end of turn. And Tamiyo Safekeeping and Blacksmith Skill are each going to give target permanent weak control, hexproof, and indestructible until end of turn. So these can be great ways at saving code for very cheap and again keep in mind with all these they're just one mana so yeah they can help us get restored balance and speaking of one mana protection spells we also have professor's warning stave off and god's willing professor's warning says choose one put a plus one counter on target creature or target creature gains indestructible until end of turn obviously the vast majority of the time we're going to take that second part but you never know a counter could come in handy maybe regardless next up there's stave off which says target creature gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn and god's willing is also going to do the exact same thing but we also get to scry one so again extra extra card selection on top of that protection definitely can help us out. And of course, when it comes to card advantage and card selection, we've got other spells that can really help us out as well with things like Faithless Looting and Secrets of the Key. Faithless Looting is going to have us draw two, then discard two, and we can flash it back for two in a red. And of course, again, it only costs a single mana. And keep in mind that actually, if we end up with a restored balance in our hand, these kind of looting effects can really help us out because we're going to want to actually discard it, get into our graveyard, then shuffle it back into our library so we can cast it thanks to Cody. Regardless, another one mana spell that can help us out though is Secrets of the Key. It says investigate, but this spell was cast from a graveyard, investigate twice instead, and of course we can flash it back for three and a blue. Again, these flashback spells can be absolutely massive, essentially helping us get two activations of Cody. Or should I say, making the most out of getting two activations with Cody, again helping us get restored balance. Regardless, because of that, we're also going to be running some other flashback spells that just cost one mana with things like Canopy Claws, Thrill the Hunt, and Homestead Courage. These really don't help us out in many ways, except for, you know, actually just being the spell that we need to cast to, to get, you know, restored balance. But that is, you know, just perfect, because again, we can do it twice and for very cheap. Canopy Claws is going to make target creature lose flying until end of turn, we can flash it back for a green. Throw the Hunt's going to give target creature plus one plus two until end of turn, and we can flash it back for a white. And then Homestead Courage says, but a plus one counter on target creature, you control gains vigilance until end of turn. But more importantly, again, we can flash it back for a white as well. But again, although these cards actually don't really give us any kind of advantage or any card advantage, they kind of do in a way since we can actually utilize them twice. But speaking of generating card advantage, we also have cards like Opt, Abundant Harvest, and Defiant Strike, which can actually get us more cards into our hand. Opt is going to have a scry one, then draw a card, so card selection, then card advantage. And then Abundant Harvest says, choose land or non-land, reveal cards in the top of your library to a vague card of the chosen kind, put that card in your hand, the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order. And then Defiant Strike says, target creature gets plus one with zero until end of turn, and draw a card. Again, even just a simple cantrip like this one can be huge with this deck. We activate Cody, we cast it, we get Cody's trigger, and then we get to replace this card as well. So we're also going to be running some other one mana cantrips with cards like Charge Through, Renegade Tactics, and Irresistible Prey. Again, each of these does things that we really don't care all that much about. Charge Through says target creature gains trample until end of turn, Renegade Tactics says target creature can't block this turn, and Irresistible Prey says target creature must be blocked this turn if able. But the most important thing is they're each all one mana and they have us draw a card. So yeah, helping us cast Restore Balance and replacing themselves is a fantastic thing. But speaking of drawing cards, we've got ways to draw even more cards with something like Seize the Spoils. It's going to make us discard one card to cast the spell, and we draw two cards and create a treasure token. So this one can help us out in a ton of ways. Again, there are going to be times where we have to discard Restore Balance if it's in our hand, so the actual additional cost can really help us. Drawing two cards is going to be nice, and also, of course, getting a treasure token, again, can be a way to ensure that we don't keep putting more lands into play to keep our land count low. But of course, we've got other ways to discard and draw cards as well, with things like Tormenting Voice, Throw a Possibility, and Cathartic Reunion. The first two are going to have us discard one card to draw two, and Cathartic Reunion is going to have us discard two to draw three. Next up, Reign of Revelation is going to have us draw three, then discard one, and the Beholden Multiverse is going to have us scry two, and then draw two. Keep in mind with this one again, if we've got Restore Balance on top of our library, well, we can scry it away. 
And then Chemist's Insight is going to have us draw two cards, and keep in mind we can jumpstart it so we can recast it from our graveyard by discarding a card and paying its cost. So again, other ways to ensure that Restore Balance doesn't get stuck into our hand. But of course, we can just have a straight up draw spell with something like Ancient Craving, which is going to have us draw three and lose three life. On top of that, we can also have a fantastic tutor in this deck with a card like Invert Invent. Invert is just a simple spell. It says switch the power and toughness of each of up to two target creatures, but the important part is it just costs one mana. So again, we can use this to get Restore Balance with Cody. But we can also just cast Invent, which says search your library for an instant and or sorcery card, reveal them, put them in your hand, then shuffle your library. So if we need a right card for a right situation, we can go tutor with this. And speaking of a flexible card, we've got Illusion Reality, which we can either cast for just a blue, so again, a way to get Restore Balance, and it says target spell or permanent becomes the color of your choice until end of turn, that doesn't matter, but again, the fact that this is a one mana spell does. And then the other half is Reality, which is going to destroy target artifact, which, you know, we can utilize on an opponent's artifact, or if we really want to get rid of Cody to take the creature count down to zero, we can. And speaking of getting rid of our own things, two fantastic cards in this deck are Nahiri's Lithoforming and Reaping the Rewards. Nahiri's Lithoforming is a sorcery for X red red, and it says sacrifice X lands for each land sacrifice this way, draw a card. You may play X additional lands this turn, lands you control, enter the battlefield, tap this turn. So with this, we can put whatever amount into X that we want to, to have to sacrifice some lands, which again is not a bad thing. After we've already gotten Restored Balance, Exiled, and ready to cast with Cody, well, we can just sacrifice some lands with this, take our land count down to next to nothing, or even nothing if we really want to, and then make it so our opponents have to sacrifice essentially all their lands. And then after we choose to cast Restore Balance for free again, with this, it says you may play X initial lands this turn, so after we actually cast that, we can then play lands to get ahead of our opponents. And then another somewhat sneaky card in this deck is Reaping the Rewards. It's an instant for just a white, so again, yep, a one mana card in this deck, and on top of that it has buyback sacrifice a land. And it gains us two life, which I guess is nice, but the important part is again that buyback. Essentially, when we cast this spell, we can sacrifice a land to get this spell back. So it's a repeatable one mana spell for this deck, which again is huge, and of course on top of that, this can help us control our land count. So we can lower our land count to the amount that we want before casting Restore Balance. And speaking of lowering our land count, we also have some lands that can help us control our land count as well with things like the Bounce Lands. So whether it's... Okay, get ready for this to say a lot of words. Here we go. Grilter, Simic Growth Chamber, Is It Boilerworks, Azorius Chancery, Demir Aqueduct, Celestia Sanctuary, Rakdos Carnarium, Boros Garrison, Golgari Rot Farm, Orza Basilica, and Guildless Commons. <sighs> okay, and now that I'm out of breath, again, these Bounce Lands essentially enter the battlefield tapped, can tap for two mana, and when they enter the battlefield, we have to bounce a land we control back to our hand. So, in a way, these can kind of act like two lands in one to help us keep our land count low. Speaking of which, we also have some somewhat similar lands to these with Jungle Basin and Coral Atoll. These are Bounce Lands as well, but a bit more specific on what you have to bounce. Jungle Basin says when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice unless you return an untapped force you control to its owner's hand. And Coral Atoll does the exact same thing, except for it's an untapped island. Regardless, again, keep in mind we've got plenty of ways to tutor for those basic lands and get them into our hand and get them into play, and then we can just play this to, you know, keep our land count low. While then also having lands that tap for more than one mana, which again, when we're reducing everyone's land count to the exact same amount, you know, like three or four, if we've got lands that tap for two, we're going to be ahead. But we also have some other lands that can actually self-reduce our land count with things like Geothermal Crevice, Tinder Farm, Irrigation Ditch, and Ancient Spring. Each of these are going to come to play tapped, tap for one color, and we can tap and sacrifice them for two other colors. So they can give us a temporary boost of mana on top of also reducing our land count, which can be fantastic. Again, sometimes even if we aren't going to use the mana that we generate when we sacrifice them, it might be worth sacrificing them anyways just to lower the land count for everyone. But now that we've talked about every single non-basic land card in this deck, let's talk about the price. So of course, as you might have guessed, you know, with the, you know, actual title of the episode, you know, in the thumbnail, uh, this is a $10 deck. Oh, okay. Technically, it's $10.02, all right? Fine. It, it's slightly more than $10, all right? And okay, fine, fine, fine. The estimated cost for this deck in this example does not actually include the basic lands in it, but if you've already got those, obviously then good. You can utilize those and your cost won't go up at all. And if not, you know, you can get basic lands very cheap. So yeah, it's not going to be much more than $10 even in that case. Regardless, though this isn't a friendly deck, it is a very budget-friendly deck still. And of course, it can potentially be even more budget-friendly friendly, if you buy this deck on TCG Player, you might be able to save even more by utilizing heavily played and damaged cards, which of course need a home too. Regardless, keep in mind that this estimated cost does not include shipping, which might vary depending upon where you live. 
Also keep in mind that literally this deck is built to be as mean as possible. Again, it is a deck for jerks. It really doesn't even have a way to win. The goal of this deck is literally just to make things miserable for other players. So it really goes without saying, but I will say it anyways. Unless your playgroup is okay with this type of a deck, which includes, well, mass land destruction essentially, do not play this deck. And if you are at all unsure, of course make sure you have a conversation ahead of time. Commander is a social format, so just talk. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one.